Hello and welcome to Heart Talk. I'm Claire Short and today I'm here in the beautiful Portsmouth Cathedral waiting to meet one of my heroes, the wonderful Bishop Egan, or as he likes to be known, Father Egan. And today we're going to be talking about his life as a priest and a bishop, what his hopes and dreams are for the diocese, and also what it means to be a Catholic in normal day-to-day -day life. Father, a very warm welcome to Heart Talk Thank and you. Shalom World TV. Thank you. Now, you prefer to be called Father. Could you tell us why that is? Yeah, very simply, I think the, the bishop is the father of the diocese. And uh, I think of all the titles, you know, that sometimes are given to the bishop, you know, like my Lord or your excellency and so on. But I think Father, sums up very well the role um, of the bishop there as the, the shepherd and the pastor. And actually the term father is, is a much more familiar term. Yeah, and I think it often puts um, people I, I, I find, you know, particularly in the parish visitations and things that I do, it often puts people at their ease and they're, they're used to speaking to their parish priest as father. So here we have a glorified parish priest, if you like, of, of the diocese. So it's kind of an easy one, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Um, you were recently at Walsingham with Youth 2000. Um, what characteristics do you see in today's Catholic youth? Yeah, it's always, I, I must say, I, I think Youth 2000 have done a fantastic job for many, many young Catholics today in the church. And uh, it's always a very beautiful and inspiring gathering uh, at Walsingham. I think one of the things I find um, with, 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 with youngsters today is they do want uh, that authenticity. Mm -hmm. They want to sense the transcendent. They want to know that the uh, spiritual and religious uh, aspirations that they have can find some kind of real uh, realisation. And yeah. uh, I think one of the very powerful things that that Youth 2000 gathering is the silent prayer around what they call the burning bush. It's the Blessed Sacrament uh, of the Holy Eucharist, which is exposed in the midst of the, the big tent. You know, we're under a great big tent and the silence and the prayer and that real belief that Jesus is with us and, uh, and that, that's what I think Youth 2000 and a lot of its work yeah. uh, and it seeks to enable for people. Sure and you were um, recently at um, the Eucharistic Congress in Liverpool and uh, they had that wonderful procession with 10,000 yes. people uh, Eucharistic wet. procession. Oh yeah it was very rainy yeah but they persevered. Yeah. Um, what did it mean to you to see that many people uh, processing uh, in public, uh, showing their Catholic identity? Yes, I, I think that was a very powerful witness, particularly when we went past uh, a few bars and pubs along the, the road and people were busy eating their dinner and they looked out the window and they could see this huge crowd going by. Also, Our Lady of Walsingham, the head of the procession, I found that deeply moving, you know, that the mother uh, is with us and, uh, and then the Lord himself in the Blessed Sacrament under the canopy at the back. So there was a very tangible sense of, um, of Christ with us on the streets of Liverpool, particularly, I think, at this time of crisis in mm -hmm. some ways within the life of the church sure. so it was kind of a real consolation yeah and you mentioned our lady of walsingham there and of course you became a bishop on the feast of our lady of walsingham um now did you get to choose that date 
Uh, I I worked it out. Right. Okay. Yeah, so and um, so I'm guessing it. Our Lady is a big influence. Our Lady Very of Walsingham is a big influence. I couldn't be a priest without uh, Mary, our mother, and she's always there. I mean, I have favourite patron saints and so on but Mary is right there at the centre I mean she's very powerful and um, I always ask her prayers for sometimes I have to do very difficult things or make difficult decisions and so on it's quite onerous uh, uh, often being uh, you know being a bishop but having Mary there having the Blessed Mother um, makes it so, well, it makes it possible. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, Our Lady of Walsingham's statue is coming to Portsmouth Diocese soon. Yes. Um, why is this important for Portsmouth? Well, I think it gives us a connection with our patrimony. I think that's one that was in our British culture. Uh, it's so easy to lose contact with history and with our patrimony and a community without uh, a sense of history is going to dissolve uh, and dissolve very quickly and unfortunately um, I think that's what often happens really so having um, that long connection that the apparition of our lady in Walsingham was the first one in the second millennium uh, and is and one of the first of a whole series through that second millennium. Uh, I think having that connection is going to be really important for us and a beautiful occasion and please God uh, uh, the the opportunity to receive many graces sure. from us. And of course, going on from that in 2020, England is going to be rededicated yes. at Walsingham as the Dowry of Mary. That's right. Now, um, how do you think Mary wants to use England specifically? Yeah, I, I mean, England has a, we are a, currently a post-Protestant culture, uh, but it's highly secularised. Mm. And Britain has had a, has been fascinating uh, and beautiful actually in many ways for the confluence of all kinds of different ideas and so on. But I believe that, um, you know, our fidelity and our continuity as the Catholic Church, the historic church, um, you know, having Mary here and at the center of of our lives uh, will lead into that new springtime that pope john paul the second spoke of yeah. uh, in terms of the new evangelization yeah. so uh, i think i think britain is very important on a world scale mm. uh, you know world scale really and for the universal church and we have all the ecumenical dimensions as well and the interreligious situation that we're we're in so this is an important powerhouse an important uh, culture for the church to be in in order to leaven it mm -hmm. and our lady of course is at the heart of the church's new evangelization um now you mentioned uh, pope john paul there oh, yeah. um, and in a recent interview you said that Catholics need to rediscover the universal call to holiness yeah. now what does this mean for ordinary Catholics in their normal day-to-day -day lives yeah well I think it means first and foremost being conscious during the day and during our lives in whatever we're doing that we are disciples of Jesus Christ first and foremost. He's called us personally to be his disciple and he wishes to form us ever more deeply in that discipleship, in that closeness with him so that we might not just be a, you know, disciple is someone under a discipline, under a discipline, a student, uh, an apprentice. Not just that we're apprentices, that we become more and more like him, but that we also share in his passionate desire to um, proclaim the gospel in our culture. So I think the call to holiness begins with that, it's being formed, it's being 
centered on Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, in the celebration of Mass, in the worship of the Lord outside the Mass. It means having a rule of life in which there are there is prayer and devotion, a love for the, the Gospels, um, a love for other members of the Church, and also a desire to serve the poor and needy. That's something I'm very conscious of here in Portsmouth. You know, I go around often in the evening, I go out for a walk, I might be saying the rosary. Um, the homeless, uh, the number of homeless in this city. I mean, that's a very obvious example of poverty, but there are many other types of poverty we know in our society. So I think having that uh, external missionary sense, that care of the poor and needy is also something very important too. And. Um... Can you describe your own relationship with Christ? Oh gosh, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I start really in the way the Holy Father um, always begins. I mean, I am a sinner, and so I need to have that personal, passionate relationship with Christ to sense his mercy and his forgiveness and also his grace and love. Um, you know, I always think the word grace, you know, we use it a lot, don't we, in, in the church, you know, but it, one of its connections there behind it in the New Testament is the Greek word dunamis, power. You know, so when we're praying for God's grace, we're paying, praying for energy and power to be able to do things we can't otherwise do and uh, so that my own relationship with the Lord um, I'm constantly asking him for you know total I have to be totally dependent on him please mm -hmm. tell me what you want me to do and am I doing what you wish me you know am I doing the right thing but please give me the dunamis the energy the grace to be able to do what it is that you wish me to do. Can you give us an example of a time where you felt incredibly proud to be a priest or a bishop and to serve the church? Yeah, I, well, many times. I mean, even just the visitation I made uh, a couple of weekends ago to uh, the parish in early, where there are just, I mean, there are three masses, it's very well, uh, very well attended, it was full, there was wonderful music, there was, uh, you know, there was a leadership team around the, the priest and they have all these ambitions about having 24-hour Eucharistic adoration and so on. I felt very proud of that because in the diocese I've just been gently trying to encourage people to focus outwards on service uh, of the needy, on the Lord in the Eucharist and in uh, the new evangelization, I actually felt, well, here's an example. I feel very proud of this, that these people here are really doing their best to serve the Lord in a, a t at times toxic secular culture in which we, we exist. Um, and what are your main ambitions for Portsmouth? Yeah, I've been the bishop here for six years now, which I had to almost check that the other day. I can't believe it's gone so quickly. And um, I mean, I I would love here if uh, you know we 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 are about thirty five thousand practicing Catholics. Uh, there's 230,000 baptised Catholics and the general population is, is 3.129 million. I would love us here um, to be able to connect, first of all, with all the not yet practising Catholics and I particularly like us to reach out in, um, you know, uh, to the people around us and to, to give them the opportunity to hear the Gospel of Christ. That's my core thing here really and that includes of course growing in holiness which is the basis of of all of that activity and it also means particularly serving the poor um, i mean i can i have uh, in our five-year plan um, which we're developing at the moment at uh, the strap line is 
bringing people closer to Jesus Christ through his church, uh, which is kind of, you know, I think every word there is bringing people closer to Jesus Christ through his church is, is a, I think, a very beautiful mission for us all. And I'd love all our Catholics in our 91 parishes and our 76 Catholic schools and our 40 religious communities actually to have that mentality that my task here is to bring people closer to Christ through his church. So this is a long-term uh, project, but one that I know uh, the Lord is gracing us with already. Um, you recently established a new personal parish in Reading, um, which will celebrate the traditional Latin mass. Latin mass, mass yeah. Uh, this is the first of its kind in Great Britain. Yeah. What spurred you on to create this groundbreaking parish, and how important is it for the UK? Yeah, I think it's well. It's important. It, it may. It's important first of all. I think for our diocese that I'm very keen that we have the full, full range, if you like, of the Catholic liturgy available yeah. to people. Um, you know, because people are very different, the young are very different. You know, sometimes you think, you know, the young like this or they like that, but, but actually they're as different as adults in many ways. And uh, so I'm very keen that we have the full range of the, the Roman liturgy and the full range of opportunities for worship of the Lord. So that's why it's important, I think, that across the diocese there are places where people can, if they wish, you know, attend the traditional Latin Mass or certainly Mass with Gregorian chant. So we were talking before about the Isle of Wight and St. Cecilia's there. I mean, that's always very beautiful, the celebration of the Mass there. But establishing them as a personal parish was, I think, a way they the 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 people have been there for 15 20 years already it's the uh, fssp uh, community has been there for 15 years already and i felt that this would give them a strength of identity and help them in their mission so there was a kind of pragmatic, if you like, the decision in making them a personal parish. They're under a wonderful patron, St. John Fisher. So we hope that they'll go from strength to strength. And the priests um, take part in all the work of the church in the pastoral area there and in the, uh, the deanery conferences and so on. So they're very kind of locally involved. So I think it helps to normalise yeah. um, that relationship. As a Catholic bishop, you are a successor of the Apostles. Which Apostle do you relate to the most? I, I particularly relate to Thomas, really. <laughs> uh, you know, unless I actually touch the hands and feel the holes and so on. But then also, of course, there was that wonderful encounter with Christ in which he made that fantastic uh, proclamation of faith, my Lord and my God. Um, but there's something very special with Thomas because, um, you know, he, to me, symbolises the kind of current um, empirical culture, you know, which is very much focused on science and technology, on touching and tasting, seeing, measuring things and, and so on. And, um, you know, one of the things we're doing, you know, in a few weeks' time, we have a, a big symposium in Winchester on science and religion, you know, and I hope this is going to be the first of several symposia. Next year, I hope we're going to do God or Mammon, you know, which will be on theology and economics, and then, you know, maybe religion and politics we can do, and Wonderful. so on. But I think um, part of evangelization is also trying to evangelize the sectors of contemporary culture and to kind of engage uh, with them and bring the Catholic tradition into a critical conversation sure. with them. So Thomas, I think, is a very good patron. So you, you've mentioned Thomas and um, obviously Mary. Uh, is there yeah. any other favourite saints you have? 
I have a number of favourite saints. Uh, saint John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests, I, I selected to be ordained a priest in 1984 on his feast day, the 4th of August 1984, because I've always had uh, been inspired by his example of priestly living and priestly life. Um, in recent times, actually, I think mainly through working especially with our youth, uh, um, I felt very close to Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, you know, the uh, patron of World Youth Day. And, and in fact, um, last year, um, I went with the head of our youth services, uh, Father P.J. Smith, who went to Turin to dedicate the youth of our diocese to Blessed P. Giorgio Frassati. The saints are very interesting, actually. I think they choose us, yeah. you know. I think so, too. Suddenly, uh, you know, I've noticed with Blessed P. Giorgio, I have sort of been, I kind of really feel a friendship. I often imagine them around the place playing practical jokes and, uh, you know, saying, come on, Bishop Phil, you know, do this now. Um, so, anyway, we ask, I do ask his prayers often. Now, the Catholic Church of, often gets very bad press in the secular media, and it, it doesn't always give the true impression of what the church is. No. Um, how do you think that uh, we can encourage people um, to realise uh, what the Catholic Church really is? Yeah, I mean, there's, on a practical level, I think it's part of um, giving confidence to our own uh, Catholic faithful that they will actually want to reach out and invite people to see the church in action. Um, but on the ground, I mean, when we go, when I go around parishes and our schools, I mean, you know, it's totally different from the the media kind of monologue on this, uh, constantly, you know, saying this and saying that. I mean, there are so many wonderful things going on in our diocese. I mean, I think of our, you know, we have the la the greatest number of seminarians we've had for decades at the moment you know um, I think of the work that we're doing that we're starting now actually and doing with refugees I, I think of the Caritas projects we have in different parts of the diocese we've had um, a fantastic over the last four years a called and gifted program where you know we've had one-to-one -one interviews with people about their relationship with God and then discerning the gifts and charisms God has given them we've got volunteers coming forward for all kinds of things yes people can be worried and anxious by you know the, the media sort of picture but then perhaps it's good that we <laughs> live under the cross in that way because it forces us to all the time to be authentic you know to come back to what we to come back to what we are but i i think of so many things particularly with our youth endeavors and our youth events where there's real joy and real happiness and that's i think the core core thing of it. it doesn't matter what they're saying people will always say this or say that won't they but they need to try it themselves and father what is your message for the viewers watching today oh that's a good one because i keep thinking of something pope benedict said in one of his uh, homilies he said be careful of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is real fire. And that's my prayer for anyone watching us today, that their hearts will be touched by the, the love and joy and fire of the Holy Spirit, that they'll be filled with peace and happiness. And indeed, I pray for you all today. May the Lord bless you, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be associated with the Shalom Media and I congratulate them for the work that they do. Recent popes have urged all of us to use the mass media to spread the Word of God. And in the words of the psalm, I think it's Psalm 18, 
Their voice goes out through all the earth, their words to the ends of the earth. Shalom is trying to make that a reality. May God bless their work, their initiative, and I wish a blessing on all who follow and watch Shalom. And may the word of God take deep root in your lives. And indeed, may Shalom and all that it stands for be blessed. I extend a blessing to all of you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.